Hello, I'm Uriel Bowser, Mayor of Washington, D.C., and I'm so excited to be part of Planet Word's opening day. This museum has found the perfect home here in the former Franklin School, a historic landmark and one of the district's first public schools. As a city full of museums, people often wonder how we can add another, and it's because each museum is so unique. Each museum in our city tells its own story and has its own way of attracting, connecting with, and intriguing visitors. And certainly that is true for Planet Word. This museum, much like Washington DC, is all about celebrating art, creativity, and innovation. We are honored and excited to welcome Planet Word to downtown, and I look forward to visiting. Congratulations, Anne, and the entire Planet Word team. Hello, I'm Ann Friedman, founder of Planet Word. Welcome to our grand opening. You are about to see and hear from many people who help bring us to this day, and from some great artists who inspire us with their love of words. As we open our doors to the DC community and to those beyond, we want to first gratefully acknowledge that we stand upon the occupied unceded territory and ancestral home of the Piscataway, descendants of the people of Nkotchtank, Wanishi. Our words wield a wondrous power stronger than any force known to man. Now how we choose to use those words lies solely in the palms of our hands. May our words be sweet, not lava or hate, an exploding volcanic fountain. May we command words that inspire and encourage and lift spirits higher than any mountain. May our words be holy water, healing and sacred. May our words speak truth, breathe hope, exhale love. May our words be shouted so loud that they drowned out the bigotry, the sound waves wash over the hypocrisy, cleanse the idiocracy, jeopardize the monopoly, for our words wield a wondrous, thunderous power, stronger than any force known to man, and how we choose to use those words. Hi, I'm Barack Obama. In many ways, I live in Planet Word. I loved reading when I was a kid. That was partly because I often felt like an outsider. I was a black kid in Hawaii. Then I was a tall, dark-skinned kid in Indonesia. Then I moved back to Hawaii, where I probably acted like an Indonesian kid. Reading was full of portable worlds that were mine, worlds that I could enter into. That made reading something that really appealed to me. As I got older, as a college student in Los Angeles and New York, I used writing and reading as useful ways to discover who I was. I figured out that words have power, that they're a way to figure out who I was and what I believed. And as president, I used words as a way to bridge our divides, to help people make sense of the swirl of events that happen all the time. Reading and writing made me who I am. Even now, they're touchstones for me. So I hope Planet Word makes reading and writing touchstones for everybody. Literacy is as fundamental as ever to a strong democracy, and it's as important as ever to help any young boy or girl make their life into whatever they want it to be. Hi, I'm Rafael Lozano Hammer, and I'm the artist responsible for Speaking Willow. It's actually a sculpture, but it has living vine and ivy over top. And then it has a digital component, which is basically a massive archive of hundreds of spoken word recordings from hundreds of different languages of the world. In fact, 99% of the languages of the population of the planet are represented. 
What I like about working with the metaphor of a tree is the idea that these languages are very different, they're unique, but they're also interconnected, they're interrelated, they branch out into some kind of development of the expression of humans. And for me, working at Planet Word is a celebration of this diversity of language, but also a highlight and an underlining that these languages are fragile and that they must be protected. Hi, I'm Anna DeVere Smith, and I am a proud member of the board of Planet Word. A long time ago, I was leafing through a book of Native American poetry, and I came upon a sentence that has stayed with me for many years. The word, the word above all, is truly magical, not only by its meaning, but also by its artful manipulation. Think about what words do. They're bridges, they're vehicles. From me to you, from you to me. Vehicles that help you know my feelings, my dreams, my stories, the stories of others. There are other kinds of vehicles that bring us one to another touch, sign languages, but without these vehicles, we would be estranged. Words bring us together. Words can also tear us apart. And the way that words have come to live in our lives has changed so much over the ages. Think about those early tablets that took signs, pictures. The descendant of pictures on caves. Presses, printing presses, remember the typewriter? And now words move swiftly, invisibly through a digital sphere. And even the ways, the different ways of words coming to us and through us will change us. When I was a girl, my grandfather said, if you say a word often enough, it becomes you. If you say a word often enough, it becomes you. Think about the magic in that. For some people, that means the power of prayer. For some people, that means the power of speech to move individuals, even nations. For some people, that means putting meaning on top of music that has no words, and then those words come to you and help you through the best times and the worst times of your life. For me, it meant acting taking the words of a playwright or a screenwriter or even the words of a real person and making an illusion that I'm somebody other than who I really am. Planet Word opens its doors to us at an extraordinary moment in human history. This is a time when technology is changing the way that we receive words and exchange words and it's going to change us. And when you walk through the doors of Planet Word, you're going to experience the magic of words. You're going to have a better understanding of the newness of now through words. And you're going to have a better understanding of the past through words. Welcome to Planet Word. Hi, I'm Jake Barton, the principal and founder of Local Projects. We are so pleased and honored to have been trusted to realize Anne Friedman's vision for an interactive museum of language. As the world's first voice-activated museum, this is truly a place where experience and words come roaring to life. I shall forget you. Anne's vision has always centered on creating a museum that upholds the greatest and most inspiring uses of words. Whether it's a humor competition for best joke telling, or a karaoke machine that teaches us about rhyming, or a magical library where the best of your favorite books literally spill out from the pages, Planet Word transforms world-shaping ideas into active, personal experiences. Visitors connect emotionally while most of all having fun, helping the meaning and value of language and its uses take root in the minds of our visitors.
the first of those galleries poses a question. Where do words come from? Our interactive word wall answers that question, featuring over 1,000 words and their origin stories. Let's go there now, where we'll hear from Chris Stiles Bacon, a Grammy-nominated musician, spoken word artist, and proud Washington, D.C. native. What's up, everyone? My name is Chris Stiles Bacon. Welcome to Planet Word. I'm going to start you out for one of my first languages. One of my first languages, before I could pronounce words, I could do sounds. So here we go. always have a drum with me i play it at the shows and they say it sounds pretty for some strange reason not everybody could see it i play it while i'm singing and i clean it while i'm breathing got a sound like and a sound like if you put them both together then this it took a lot of practice and it started as a hobby and now i got 20 different drums in my body it's the beatbox it's the beatbox the human beatbox Now I can make people groove cause it sounds so smooth with the And then bring it back as I bust a rap And I can keep it going cause it's smooth like that The beat boss it started let's say in the 80s People heard the sounds with the mouth and said it's crazy Cause you can make the sounds with the letters in the alphabet Like P's and P's and T's and other things from clock sounds and doorbell rings you see the beat boss it uses all types of things now we can make it go fast and make it go slow it's so versatile that we can make it do both it's the beat boss it's the beat boss the human beat boss let's fade it out like an old school record it's the Thank you, my friends. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brad Smith, president of Microsoft, and I just want to take a minute to say how excited I am and we at Microsoft are to be part of this virtual opening ceremony for Planet Word. I think that the world needs Planet Word not just Washington, D.C., not just the United States of America, but the entire planet. This is indeed aptly named. Did you know that there are 7,000 languages spoken on planet Earth? But sadly, it's projected that over half of those languages will likely disappear in the coming decades. They'll disappear as the last person to speak that language passes away. And one of the things that we've found as a company that operates around the world is that when a language dies, a part of a community dies with it. Part of its culture, part of its heritage, even part of the connectivity that holds a current community together. The ability to have a voice activated museum, the ability for people to rediscover, to remember, to learn anew 
the importance that language plays for all of us. I look forward to the day when I can walk through Planet Word in person, but I just have to say, it gives me inspiration, it gives me resilience to look forward to that day when we can all go out and about the country again. It gives me hope, appreciating everything that Ann Friedman has done to persevere throughout all of this and bring Planet Word to life. Thank you, Ann. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of this. It is gonna be a foundation for our future. Hi, I'm Steve Schwarzman. On behalf of my wife, Christine, and myself, we want to congratulate Ann Friedman, as well as everyone involved with the creation of Planet Word. Hello, I'm Paul Simon. I know how long this project has been in the works and how dear it is to the people who contributed to its making. I'd like to send my congratulations. Hello, I'm Diane von Fürstenberg, and I am very excited to be involved since the beginning with Planet Word. Words are very important. They create energy, they have impact, and they make things happen. Words are so important because words have power. They open doors of opportunity and point the way to new discoveries. I think the public is going to be absolutely delighted to have this addition to the cultural landscape in Washington, D.C. I love reading. I remember learning to do that in my local library. What can be more useful than introducing younger people to the spoken word, the written word. So to the incredible Ann Friedman, all the museum staff, and everyone who helped to bring the museum to life, I have two words. Thank you. Oh, and one more. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Larry Solomon, at and Chief Communications Officer. It's a privilege for AT&T to play a role in bringing this unique museum to life. AT&T is all about connections, and few things connect us all on a more basic level than words and language. Our founder, Alexander Graham Bell, conducted some of his early experiments in the Franklin School building, which is home to this amazing museum. Supporting Planet Word is a great way to honor our past as we look to the future of helping people connect. Words lead us to connection. Connection leads us to understanding, and that's something we can all celebrate. On behalf of all of us at AT&T, congratulations on the opening of the Planet Word Museum. So many of us learn to love words through lyrics, the lyrics to the songs that accompany our lives, that we begin to love when we're young people, that we claim as our own, and that make the foundation for later in life all of our memories. When we think of our weddings, when we think of our parties, when we think of all our major events, we think of them through song. And this is one of the really iconic ones that spans generations. We know a song has really made it when Children, parents, and grandparents all love it. This is Joni Mitchell's Both Sides Now. Rose and flows of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and further canyons everywhere I've looked at clouds that way now they only block the sun they rain and snow on everyone so many things I would have done the clouds got in my way I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall. 
Hi, my name is Mr. Ann Friedman. My friends call me Tom for short. I've been a reporter and commentator on big news events for the New York Times my whole adult life. I've had a front row seat for some amazing historical events, but nothing has given me greater joy and satisfaction than the front row seat I've had watching my wife Ann conceive, design, fundraise, organize, and implement her vision for Planet Word. I remember how it started like it was yesterday, only it wasn't yesterday. It was 2013, and Anne had read about something called MoMath, an interactive museum to inspire a love of math. She was sitting at her desk in our kitchen, noodling around on her computer, and at one point looked up and said to me, if there is a math museum, why isn't there a word museum? And then she set about searching on Google for museum consultants. The rest, as they say, is history. Anne gathered together a board, most of them just friends of ours, whom she knew loved words and language or would just enjoy being along for the ride, and set about implementing her vision. I want to thank each of those board members, some of whom are childhood friends, some adulthood friends, some new acquaintances. What they all had in common, though, was a willingness to bet on Anne's vision with their time and money when it was all just a gleam in her eye. Planet Word was hard to explain to potential donors because there is simply nothing else like it in the world. I've helped Anne with the fundraising and serve as the museum's vice chairman of the board, but my main role has been cheerleader for my amazing wife. Nothing has given me greater pleasure than for the world to see what I always knew, just how smart, creative, talented, and relentless is Anne Friedman. For the last seven years, every day and night, when Anne was home, she either thought about or worked on this museum, sitting at her computer hour after hour, overcoming one obstacle after another, or pursuing one new idea after another to make sure that Planet Word would be another worthy jewel in the crown of great Washington, D.C. museums. She was dogged, fearless, and shameless. One day, she was calling Paul Simon, 
asking him for help in securing licenses for songs in our songwriting gallery, which is named after Paul. And the next day she was calling Bob Iger to get help with content from a Disney film. No one turned her down. But most of the time, Anne was reading, reading every word of content, checking every video, reading every contract line by line. You simply cannot imagine how much work she did or how many sleepless nights she had. But she was not alone in her indie fatigability. Wait, is that a word on our word wall? You see, God so smiled on Anne's project, so much so that he sent her an angel to help her. A woman who could have been Anne's intellectual and ethical twin, Patty Isaacson Sabe. She was even from Iowa, like Anne. This museum would not have been conceived without Anne, but it would not have been finished without Patty. Patty, thank you for all the hours you have put in on Planet Word, away from your family back in Seattle. And thanks to all the members of Anne's founding team. They are truly the little group that could. Anne created this museum as a gift to the city and the world to inspire reading and foster community around a love of books and words. And I can tell you, she has already been paid. I have been watching her, watching the joy and delight manifested by all the young people who have been going through the museum, testing out the different interactive exhibits. I can't tell you who had the bigger smile on their face, those kids or Ann Friedman. That's the only payment, the only thanks Ann ever wanted, to see thousands of visitors engage with the exhibits of Planet Word and have their eyes lit up by a book, their minds inspired by a speech, their laughs triggered by a joke, their voices lifted by a song, their hearts warmed by a poem, their ears caressed by a passage, their curiosity kindled by a phrase, and their world expanded by a word. One of Anne's favorite lines when she does something that annoys me is to defend herself by saying, well, honey, you married me. Yes, pumpkin, I did. And now the whole planet and planet word knows why. Hello, I'm Naomi Shehab Nye, and I'm so happy to be with you to celebrate the opening of Planet Word. I believe in the power of words for everyone, not just writers and readers and journalists and teachers and students, but everybody of every age, every day. Welcome the word. Round in the mouth of the day, the word whirls and waits to be recognized, warming each time someone speaks or writes it. Words always willing to be shaped, cajoled, connected. Learn their histories, find their roots. Words have families too. Words want us to know them better slipped into lives, they blossom. Words get so lonely if they go a long time, floating, weightless. You could carry a word all your life as a guide. It will shimmer, befriend you. Your word will change. One thing for sure, words mustn't fail me today. I need the best, most heartfelt words to properly thank everyone who's brought us to this milestone day. So first, thank you to the mayor and her team who gave an untested idea for a museum, a chance to exist, and an amazing home in which to live. To the architects and contractors who imagined how this 150-year-old shuttered and decaying building could have a second life. To the exhibit designers and fabricators who took my kernels of ideas and turned them into marvelous, captivating experiences. To the donors who believed in this unproven concept and who trusted us to put their dollars to good use. And to the tiny but mighty Planet Word staff who turned these ideas into a complete functioning museum. In fact, our staff is so tiny, I can list everyone by name in 10 seconds. Thank you, Nikki, Patty, Emily, Mary, Angel, Jeff, and Kel. Thank you to Adriana and Rebecca, 
Justin, Anna, Caitlin, and Justine. Yes, just this mere handful of people have brought you Planet Word. And then there are the thanks I need to deliver to my friends and family who put up with my obsession for seven years. Years of late dinners and overnight stays in New York and distracted focus on their lives. Sorry, Orly and Natalie. And emails written into the wee hours. In particular, thank you to my husband, Tom, who has been my patient sounding board and unflagging booster throughout all these years and challenges, whose constant cheerleading and advocacy for the project have made me blush. Everyone should be so lucky to have as generous and positive a husband and partner as Tom, and a role model for never settling for less than your best. And thank you to my mother, Kay Buxbaum, who always believed in this project. Her generosity has been unstinting. At age 91, she remains a role model for how to age gracefully, how to always be learning, and how to pay stylish attention to the very smallest detail of everything one does, traits I've tried to emulate throughout this project. And thank you to my father and uncle who are no longer with us, but who taught me about hard work and taking risks, uncompromising excellence, seeking out trusted advisors, and building things from the ground up. They made me feel special and smart from a young age and gave me the self-confidence to accomplish whatever I set my mind to. So to all you adults out there, know that your words matter to your children and students. The words you use can inspire and motivate, even when those children are 60-somethings. And of course, my biggest thanks must go to Patty, Planet Word's remarkable executive director, the one person without whom I could not have succeeded. Her decision to take a leap of faith on a startup museum far from home with no promise of success has been the key to pulling this off so smoothly, effortlessly, and enjoyably. Her expertise, her work ethic, her good cheer, her organizational skills, and her incredible memory for detail kept this whole endeavor on track and actually fun. She has been my intellectual partner, internalizing the ideas behind Planet Word as her own from day one. Seven years ago, when I first began thinking about creating a museum devoted to words and language, I knew that the museum had to have exhibits about how babies acquire language, about the origins of words, about what we can create with words, and about how powerful they can be but I had no idea that by the time this museum was ready to open, that our country would be so focused on, even obsessed by, words and language. By what names we call different political groups. By whether there could be alternative facts or alternative definitions of the words hero or patriot. Or by the continuing debate over the words in the Constitution. I had no idea that we'd be talking about what is a lie versus ordinary political spin, that our most revered news outlets would be accused of purveying fake news, that we would be arguing about the definition of a riot, that newspapers could start capitalizing both black and white when describing people, that we would offer people their choice of pronouns or that we could place an X at the end of a word in order to avoid thoughtlessly assigning gender. Yes, language has evolved, as it always has over the past seven years. If Planet Word was an idea whose time had come in 2013, it is even more relevant and central to conversations about who we are as humans in 2020 which is one reason that, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic to opening anything to the public right now, I wanted to move ahead and open before the election, if it could be done safely. Because we are all right now grappling with fundamental issues about who we are as a nation and how we should get along with one another and how we should talk to each other. I want Planet Word to be part of that discussion 
I hope that Planet Word will help visitors become more careful speakers and listeners and become the critical thinkers our democracy depends upon, that they'll find the words needed to build empathy and community, to bridge divides, and that they'll become more aware of the words they use, of the power of those words to harm or to heal, and of the fun and beauty that words can add to our world at a time when we so desperately need them to do just that. Yes, words can bring us together if we let them, and Planet Word is ready to lead that charge. As the Franklin School brought children together for learning starting in 1869, I predict that Planet Word, through its programs and exhibits, will create a community of people who also use words and learning for the public betterment. Words are our human superpower, and we are all collectors of words from the day we are born. So we just need a museum to showcase the bounty that we already possess. Planet Word is here to remind us of the vast collection that is ours to wield, for better or worse. Words, I ask you, what will you do with yours? Hello, and welcome to Planet Word. Step up to the mic and say hello. 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 Yo, hi there. You're standing in front of about 1,000 words. And that's not even 1% of the entire English language. for generations. Off with their heads! Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late! In this best-selling new kind of cookbook, Chef Samin Nasrat has taken the sprawling, daunting, multicultural subject we call cooking. Everything's a wheel turning and turning, never stopping. The frogs is part of it, and the bugs, and the fish, and the wood thrush too, and the people. All this wordplay gives the song an unpredictable vibe, exactly like a schoolyard where everybody is up to something. What did the tailor think of her new job? It was so-so. <laughs> Oh, come that on, come was on. not come on, close come on. to fun. A little laugh. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There, there is the United, United States, States of America. America. If you use words to attack, you're turning words into a weapon. It's easy to forget about how much power words hold. Sin ciao. Hello. Hola. I speak Arabic. I speak Icelandic. I speak Amharic. Hindi. Korean. Hawaiian. Farsi. And I speak Hebrew. Shalom. Shalom. I know. 
In Korea, we have seven different levels of respect. Navajo has a totally different... Our culture is one of the oldest in the world. Zulu is a clique language. My great-grandpa was the last speaker, but our language lives on in the names of places around D.C. Thank you for learning about my language. To say goodbye, we say Sloan Lath. Ciao. Agul. Say Jin. Bless, bless. Hagoene. Paalam.